large language models typically predict text one token at a time. But is that the only way? This paper introduces LADA, a diffusion-based language model that challenges the autoregressive paradigm. Instead of predicting tokens sequentially, LADA starts with a fully masked sequence and progressively reconstructs it, predicting all masked tokens at each step. This bi-directional approach not only scales competitively with autoregressive models, but also addresses tasks like reversal reasoning, where it outperforms models like GPT-40. In this video, we'll break down how LADA's forward masking and reverse prediction process works, why it scales effectively, and what it means for the future of language modeling. Let's get started. Large language models typically rely on autoregressive methods, predicting one token at a time based on what came before. But is that really the only option? According to this paper, maybe not. The authors introduce a model called Large Language Diffusion Architecture, or YADA. It uses a diffusion process. Instead of generating text token by token, it gradually unmasks words in a sequence until the entire text is revealed. Wondering how that works? Think of it like a jigsaw puzzle that starts fully scrambled and becomes clearer piece by piece. This is different from the usual left-to-right generation, but the principle remains the same. Minimize the gap between real-world text and what the model produces. They present a key equation illustrating how generative models learn by maximizing the likelihood of real text data. Then they contrast this with autoregressive language models, which generate text one token at a time. Autoregressive approaches do work well, but they can have trouble with especially complex reasoning tasks. Curious whether a diffusion-based model can really keep up with the top autoregressive ones? Check out the radar chart here, which compares YADA to standard methods like LAMA on benchmarks, including math and reasoning tasks. YADA's performance is right there in the mix particularly on tasks requiring more advanced reasoning. This hints that diffusion models could be a viable alternative to conventional autoregressive architectures. Now, why might diffusion models be a strong choice for large language tasks? The key argument is that scalability and performance aren't locked to autoregressive methods alone. Those gains mostly come from transformers, large data sets, and a statistical property called Fisher consistency which ensures the model learns a faithful approximation of the real data. The authors also note that skills like following instructions or contextual reasoning don't rely exclusively on left-to-right token generation. Any model that can predict missing portions of a structured sequence can develop these abilities. That includes diffusion models, which gradually reconstruct text from masked tokens. Here's a rough sketch of how Yada does it. It starts with a partially masked sequence. During the forward diffusion process, more and more tokens get masked until the sequence is almost entirely hidden. Then, the reverse process slowly predicts the missing tokens until the text is fully recovered. Training is straightforward in principle. The model. The model sees partially masked sequences and attempts to guess the missing parts. Cross-entropy loss is applied only to those masked tokens, so the model focuses on reconstruction. Because Yada looks at tokens from both directions, instead of just from left to right, it picks up a broader view of context, an advantage in tasks that demand deeper reasoning. Next up is a closer look at how Yada is actually trained and why its design matters. First comes pre-training. The model learns to predict masked tokens. But the crucial detail is that the percentage of masked tokens varies randomly for each sequence. That means sometimes the text is barely masked, and other times, it's almost all blanks. This variation encourages the model to handle any level of missing information and improves scalability as the data grows. The training objective? Minimize the cross-entropy loss on these masked tokens, which pushes Liata to generate sequences that line up well with real-world text. The model's architecture is still a transformer, but unlike traditional transformers with causal masking, Yada uses bidirectional attention. In other words, it can see the entire sequence in both directions, not just from left to right. Wondering about data volume? The authors use 2.3 trillion tokens drawn from multiple domains like general text, math, code, and different languages. To keep the model robust, 1% of training sequences are randomly shortened. Finally, training is fine-tuned with a learning rate schedule that ramps up, stays steady, then winds down, all managed by the Atom W Optimizer. This setup helps ensure efficient training and steady gains. Now let's see how Yada fine-tunes its ability to follow instructions. This stage is known as Supervised Fine-Tuning, SFT. The model sees a prompt and a response, with certain tokens in the response masked. It's then asked to fill in the blanks. The cross-entropy loss again focuses on those masked tokens. But unlike pre-training, which masks tokens at random all over, 
SFT targets only the response section, teaching Yada to produce coherent answers for a given prompt. When it's time to generate text, Ladder reconstructs the masked response step by step. It can even remask and repredict tokens it's unsure about. Nine. One approach is to remask the tokens the model is least confident in, giving them another pass. And another approach speeds things up by splitting the response into blocks and predicting each block in turn. How do we measure success here? The evaluation mirrors SFT, but with a twist. The model only predicts a random subset of the masked tokens. That makes the test more stable and offers a clearer view of how well the model can fill in the gaps. Scaling is often the name of the game in large language models, so the big question is, does Yada keep up as it gets bigger? The short answer appears to be yes. It shows competitive performance with traditional autoregressive models at increasing scales. Take a look at figure three to see what the authors found. It includes six scatter plots, each measuring performance on a different benchmark, such as Massive Multitask Language Understanding, MMLU, for general knowledge, or GSM8K for math problems. On the x-axis, you'll find flops, the total computational effort, and on the y-axis, accuracy. Red stars mark yada, while blue dots mark a baseline autoregressive model. As both models scale up, their accuracy rises. But in certain tasks, like MMLU and GSM8, K yada's curve goes up faster, suggesting it's more efficient with added compute. Even on tougher benchmarks like PIQA, Yada narrows the gap as flops increase. For a fair comparison at smaller scales, like 1 billion parameters, the authors kept architecture, data, and training conditions the same for Yada and the baseline. Even as models grow, Yada holds its own. After training on a 2.3 trillion token dataset, Lada 8B surpasses Llama 27B on nearly all tasks and performs comparably to Llama 38B. In other words, diffusion based models like Lada really can match or outdo typical autoregressive methods when they scale. Curious about how Yada stacks up against other large language models? Check out the two tables here. One focuses on pre-trained models, the other on those that have gone through instruction tuning. In the first table, Lada 8B base goes head-to-head -head with models like Llama 3, Llama 2, QN, and Mistral. The benchmarks range from MMLU and ARC, AI2 Reasoning Challenge, C for general tasks, GSM8K for math, human evil for coding, to CMMLU for Chinese understanding. Yada scores 65.9% on MMLU, 70.7% on GSM8K, and also does well on Chinese tasks, with 69.9% on CMMLU and 70.5% on CEVOL. However, it falls behind Llama 3 on tasks like Heliswag and BBH, Big Bench Hard. The second table highlights instruction following performance, Thestrime. This time, Lada 8B Instruct goes up against models fine-tuned with reinforcement learning. Despite not using RL, Lada manages 78.6% on GSM8K and 88.5% on ARCC, though it doesn't do as well on MMLU and Human Evil compared to RL-tuned models. All in all, the table suggests Yada is strong on reasoning and structured tasks, but it could potentially gain from reinforcement learning for certain benchmarks. Ever wonder how these models handle creative or unusual tasks? Here, the authors test Yada with poem completion, both forward, predicting the next line, and backward, predicting the previous line. The models compared are GPT-40, QN2.57B Instruct, and Lada 8B Instruct. GPT-40 comes out on top in the forward task, scoring 82.7, with QN 2.5 and Yada trailing behind. But in the reversal task, Yada gets a 42.4, beating out QN 2.5 and GPT 4.0. That suggests Yada's diffusion-based approach, which treats tokens more symmetrically, helps with tasks that aren't strictly left to right. Then there's a discussion of related work. Diffusion models have been a big hit in the image domain, but they're relatively new to text. Some methods treat text as continuous data, while others, like Yada, use a discrete token-based approach. Gradually revealing tokens can help these models scale, making them a real contender against common autoregressive systems like Llama. They also mention other uses for diffusion models, like question answering and even protein generation. It's possible we'll see them rival autoregressive models across more and more tasks as the technology evolves. Finally, here are two real-world examples of Yada in action. First is a math problem. How far can someone travel at 12 kilometers per hour for four hours, then at six kilometers per hour for four more hours? 
Yada multiplies 12 by 4 to get 48 kilometers, then 6 by 4 to get 24 kilometers, and sums them for a total of 72 kilometers. If you look at the timeline visualization, you'll see how Yada gradually predicts tokens, with darker colors indicating later prediction steps. Next, there's a multi-round dialogue example. The user wants the first two lines of Robert Frost's The Road Not Taken, which Lada provides. Then they ask for Chinese and German translations, which Lada also handles before finally requesting a five-line poem about life choices, where each line starts with C. Yada responds with a short poem that follows the requested format. In closing, the authors point out Yada's main strengths. It scales well, handles in-context learning, and follows instructions effectively. Because it's bi-directional and uses a diffusion-based approach, it avoids some limitations of traditional language models. However, it doesn't yet include reinforcement learning or specialized attention mechanisms, so there's still room to push its capabilities further. Thanks for joining us today, Pinkton. Happy learning and stretching.